this time. Please rise. privilege. We have the opportunity to honor a man that has served his country, community, and school for a lifetime. Today we will recognize Mr. Carl Schultz for everything that he has done for Sevastopol schools. At this time, I'm going to ask Mr. Mike Madden to come forward and introduce our special guest. It is my pleasure and honor to introduce Mr. Carl Schultz, our honoree for today. Carl, stand please. I would also like to introduce Ruth and Marcia Schultz, who are accompanying Carl today and part of his uh, family and strength. It's wonderful to be part of giving, a Carl, giving Carl a send-off like this. And forgive me for switching between Mr. Scholes and Carl. It's taken me 40 years to call him Carl. <laughs> so I'll be switching back and forth. This is one of the first real all-school assemblies I remember. And Dr. Underwood said there's been others for send-offs and so forth, but this is really neat to see all 556 of you grand students of Carl Schultz. I can only hope all of you have someone come along in your life that can impact you so positively as Carl has impacted me. Having a special mentor that caringly shapes your values and goals has been a gift that Carl has given me and thousands of other of us, others of us who have had contact with him over the years. I grew up in a family of very limited means. The experiences that Carl gave us in school and away from school were things that surely would have not happened to members of my family and many others here at Sevastopol. Many of you students, you parents, you grandparents have experienced Carl's work in making maple syrup, bringing chickens to school, live otter programs, fishing trips, skiing, and hundreds of other wholesome activities initiated and encouraged by Mr. Schultz. Mr. Schultz has shown youth and adults what it means to serve your community. Carl's childhood experience in a family where his father was a recognized World War I veteran and his own service to our country in World War II surely have helped instill his total commitment to serve the interest of others. Time does not allow, and Carl would not appreciate, a listing of his many initiatives and honors that he's been part of. All who know Carl 
and his family know of the unselfish giving of time and energy that Carl and his family have given to this school, this community, this state, and our country. Mr. Scholz left home at age 17 to serve his country in the far off land of Japan. He became a paratrooper with the Army 11th Airborne, known as the Airborne Angels. What an adventure and scary experience a small town boy and his family had 69 years ago. To go to a country where America had just unleashed the most terrible weapon known to man. Carl told me the effects of atomic warfare and radiation were not understood when he and other young soldiers were sent to Japan. The exposures were considered, which would be considered dangerous today were just not known. Some of us fellow educators have teased him that his atomic experience must be the reason he has such a glowing personality. <laughs> As a elementary student and as a teacher, I remember Carl putting on a wig and a tuxedo and doing magic tricks for us. We always wondered how he lit up the ordinary light bulb just by holding it. I know why. This school is almost, no, this year, this school is 90 years old. Carl has been part of it for over two-thirds of its existence. Thank you, Mr. Schultz, Carl, for what you've given me, what your continued service to this school, this community, and to this country. I would now like to introduce our Veteran Services Officer, Mr. Scott McFarland. Dr. Underwood, Principal Bear, students of Sevastopol Schools, and family and friends, and, and most of all, Mr. Schultz. Thank you all for honoring a distinguished World War II veteran today. I understand that uh, Mr. Schultz will be going on the honor flight in a few days, and I believe some of you may have been uh, studying about uh, the honor flight. And the mission of the honor flight is to offer our local World War II and Korean War veterans a memorable, safe, and rewarding trip to honor them, to take them to our nation's capital, to Washington, D.C., and see their memorial. Now, the trip happens all in one day, so it's a real long day. Uh, it's completely free of charge to the veteran. The airlines and volunteers provide uh, much of the services at a cost -free, uh, on a cost-free basis. And it's a small way for the volunteers and, and the public that run this program, <coughs> excuse me, to uh, say thank you to our World War II and Korean War veterans. And we did have a Vietnam flight uh, during EAA out of Oshkosh, but that was one time for now, and we're back to uh, taking the World War II veterans and the Korean War veterans. A one-day trip, as I said, the honor flight will visit the World War II memorial and may visit many of the other memorials in our nation's capital, uh, to include uh, the Iwo Jima Memorial, the Korean and Vietnam War Memorials, the Lincoln Memorial, and Arlington National Cemetery.
Many veterans who go on the honor flight remark that next to their, their wedding day and uh, the births of their children, the honor flight is one of the greatest days in their lives. One woman who was at the airport when an honor flight got back to Milwaukee said, this is one experience that I personally will never forget. Patriotism in its purest form. People will often tell you of things they have done that you should experience a once in a lifetime, like going to Las Vegas, helicopter rides, or skydiving. My suggestion is to attend a homecoming of our veterans on the next Stars and Stripes honor flight. Unbelievably, the 70th anniversary of D-Day, the Allied landings on the beaches of Normandy, France, on June 6, 1944, is only a few days away. World War II, thankfully, was the last major military conflict involving the entire world. Mr. Schultz served with the 11th Airborne Division, known as the Airborne Angels, and the Air 11th Airborne had a long and distinguished history in the Pacific Theater to include the occupation of Japan. And in recognition of Mr. Schultz's service in World War II, I would like to present him with a World War II memorial certificate with the Airborne Angels logo on it in recognition of his service. And let me grab that, Mr. Schultz. Thank you very much. Mr. Schultz, at this time, the choirs would like to do a repeat performance of a song entitled American Tears that we sang at this year's Door County Veterans Day program. And we would like to sing this in your honor. You are our hero, our patriot, our soldier, and our pioneer. Thank you for your service.
Excellent. We have some students who would like to present some cards to Mr. Schultz. Could we have the representatives of the elementary, the middle, and the high school please come up? Ruth said he will truly read every signature on those cards. So thank you for including your last name too. That will mean a lot because he's probably known over half your parents and grandparents. I'd like to give our pioneer and our hero a chance to say a few words. Thank you, Mr. Madden, Mr. McFarland, and all, the, all the, the students and faculty. This is a surprise and deception of my life. <laughs> I was told to come over here to meet with Mr. Bear in regard to a scholarship. So, so thank you very, very much. It has been our great fortune my family's great fortune, I want to thank them and mine to have been a part of this school and community. It's certainly one of the finest in the country. So thank you again. I certainly uh, appreciate it. I hope I deserve all this <laughs> recognition, but thank you again, everyone. Thank you. I'd like to uh, thank our band and choir one more time. It was such a beautiful performance by them. And of course, one more time with Pioneer Spirit, I would like to thank Mr. Schultz. So if I could have one more loud round of applause for Mr. Schultz.